Hello, thanks for tuning in and for joining me as we work through Unit 7 Rhythm Reading. This is from the Alfred Adult Class Piano Book, 2nd Edition. We're on page 99, what a fun number, uh, and we're talking about dotted eighth notes and how that works into the rhythm. So in common time signatures, we're thinking 4-4, four, four, the most common, 3-4, also common, and 2-4. All of those meters, we have the quarter note equaling one beat. So I'm gonna address those first. So if you have a dotted eighth note in 4-4 four, four time, the eighth note would equal half of the beat. So that's nothing new, we've talked about that before. I wanna break it down a little bit farther than that. So we have an eighth note, an eighth note is also equal to two sixteenth notes. Okay, so two sixteenth notes, how do I get half of two sixteenth notes? Well, half of two would equal one, two plus one equals three. So now I figured out how to create the eighth note plus the dot in the rhythm. The dot always adds half of the value of the original note. Half of the original note was an eighth note. Half of an eighth note would be a 16th note. All right, now if you notice here on the first exercise, measure one, beat four, you're seeing this dotted eighth note but you'll notice that it's followed by that 16th note. There's that last part of the rhythm we're missing. So we had three quarters of a beat and we had one last quarter to fill in. So that was the final 16th note. So I'm gonna count that beat four several times in a row just so you can hear how it sounds. So here it is, measure one, beat four. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So that's how that rhythm just in isolation sounds like. We're gonna go ahead and do number one, and then I'm gonna skip number two, go to number three, four, and five, and work through all of those, and we'll come back and talk about the six, eight examples. If you'll join me at the piano or on top of the table here, wherever you're at. Okay, so right here we have stems up. This is number one. I'm just gonna tap right here on top of the instrument. You're welcome to follow along or even clap as you feel comfortable. We only have one hand that would have to play if you're doing this on the keyboard. Okay, so four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, hold E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E, last measure, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So notice I'm still counting and the very smallest level here, all in 16th notes, so you can tell exactly where that dotted rhythm occurs. If you're a little more comfortable with the rhythms and counting carefully, you may be able to count it in eighth note patterns. But for right now, I think it's best for us as beginning this sort of rhythm to count it in 16th notes. All right, I'm skipping now to number three. You'll notice number three is in four, four time also, but it's a little trickier because you see both hands are operating together. So down stems, left hand, up stems, right hand. Okay, so together you notice the left hand is just one and two, and that looks pretty easy for the first two measures. Right hand, you're doing the one E and a pattern. So if you put it together, it would be like this. One E and a, together E left right, together E left right. One E and a, two E, excuse me, two E and a, three E together and together E and a. Measure three, the pattern switch. Right hand is eighth note and left hand you take the dotted rhythm like this. Measure three, ready and. One E and a, together E, right, left, together E, right, left, together E, right, left. Four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, last beat. Okay, so I hope that was clear. I kind of divided up the exercise into two parts because the hand swapped rhythm. So I'm hoping that was helpful to you. You'll notice on measure four, I said four, meaning measure four, not beat four, so if that got confusing, sorry about that. But that kind of helps you sort out where the hands play and make that crazy looking line a little more comfortable to play. I'm gonna go through now and do all of line three without the interruptions and explaining what I'm doing. So if you've held on this far, try it with me all the way through if you need to. Here we go, so four E and a, 
one e and uh, two e and uh, three e and uh, four e and uh, measure two e and uh, together and left right together e together and four e and uh, measure three and right left two e and uh, together e right left four e and uh, last measure one e and uh, 2e right left together e and uh, together and hold and Whew. you made it thanks for hanging in there okay let's go on number four is a little easier it looks easier anyway this is in three four time three beats in the measure you notice that the left hand is pretty simple here mostly quarter notes um, and you'll see a half note and a dotted half note, so not very busy in the left hand. Right hand, you're holding down that dotted rhythm. Okay, here we go. Together on number four. Three E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, together E and uh, together E and right together E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, together E and uh, together E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, so be sure on that last measure it's so simple that many times I find students just kind of skipping through those three beats so it's got to be exactly three beats so if you're apt to cheat a little bit there make sure you go ahead and count one E and a two E and a three and a whew, tongue twister but get all the way through that so you have the full beat okay moving right on to number five this is in two four only two beats in this measure so we will do that notice that the left hand is doing either eighth notes or quarter notes right hand you're busier with those sixteenths and dotted rhythms if you're having a little trouble getting this hands together you might want to try playing it hands separately on these more difficult ones like number three and number five so that's always a really great idea if you feel like you're struggling a little bit with this rhythm is to try to do it one hand at a time so for example on number five you could do right hand alone one e and uh, two e and uh, left hand will measure one one e and uh, two e and uh. So that's a very basic way, and you know all of those rhythms, but just taking it one hand at a time. So if you're a little bit challenged with both hands coordinating together, hey, that's not new. Pianists always have to struggle with that. So you might want to add that into your practice. When you get that sorted out hand separate, then we'll come back and do this measure, uh, excuse me, number five together. So here it is, hands together. We'd have two E and uh, together, right, together, right. 2e left right measure 2 and 1e and a measure 3e and a 1e and a last measure 1e and a 2e and a okay so that should get you through that example and that's number 5 Lastly, we're going to talk about the last two friends here, number two near the top of the page, and the very last one, number six. So these are in six, eight meter. Six, eight meter means that the eighth note now equals one beat. We've changed the game. So how does that work with the dotted eighth note rhythm? Well, if the eighth note equals one beat, half of one beat would be one and a half beats. So actually this rhythm might feel a little simpler to some of you out there. So on number two, I'm looking here at the first measure. So we'd have one and two and three and four and five and six and. So on that second half of the measure, you'd have the dotted eighth note. I almost said quarter note, dotted eighth note on beat four. So that would count four and five and would be the 16th note. Remember now, the 16th note is half of a beat. So don't let that confuse you. Think about that for a second. Eighth note equals one beat. 16th note now equals half of a beat. Okay, so here's number two. This is just the left hand. So I'm just gonna clap this one or you can just tap it with the left hand, whatever your teacher has instructed you to do. Here we go, five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and measure two two and three and hold and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and 
One and two and three and four and five and six and. There we go. Okay, not too shabby, right? We could do that. Lastly, number six, <clears throat> a little more involved with both hands, of course. Left hand, again, being a little simpler. I'm also interested here at the last measure of this exercise, you see that the hands together actually are helping you with the counting. So this is the last measure of number six. You'd have together and left, right, together, that first half of the measure. Counting, it would be one and two and three and. So actually that kind of divides out that rhythm to helps you hear where that dotted note comes in in the right hand. Okay, from the top of number six, shall we try it? Here we go. All right, hands up, uh, four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and together and hold and six and one and two and together and four and five, six and together and two and three and four five and six and. Okay, so be cautious once more on measures two and four of this exercise. You have that dotted quarter note equaling three beats. So be cautious that you don't accidentally, I've even done it before, that we don't accidentally cut off a little bit of those beats, three full beats there. All right, friends, well, thank you so much for joining in. I hope that you found this helpful. This is the nitty gritty of learning music, whether it's piano, whatever instrument you're learning, rhythm is a huge part of it. So thanks for hanging in there, and I'm really proud of your effort. I think you're gonna do great when you next bring this to your teacher. Have a great piano lesson. See you next time.